I just want to pick up on something that I was talking about this morning, and thinking about this morning, which is to do with uh, dualism, and what I was describing as a kind of innate uh, uh, natural dualism that we seem to be uh, we seem to be born with and seems to be part of the human condition. And I was talking about uh, uh, Paul Bloom and his book, and what were the uh, references to support that idea that uh, all scientific evidence to the contrary, our phenomenal experience is one of having some kind of uh, evanescent, transcendent self inside of a material world uh, which we identify with to a greater or larger extent. The part, the part of that material world that we tend to identify more strongly with is our own body, of course. Uh, where I was thinking about going with that is in terms of out-of-body experiences, which I had myself but many, many years ago. I had a very strong one at the dentist, actually, when I was a child. Uh, uh, it was a very, very strange experience indeed, actually. I think about it often. But uh, it's an odd one, this out-of-body experience thing, isn't it? Because um, it kind of confirms the duality which, as I say, marks the being of human, really, in that we can posit ourselves, ourselves, that sense of self, the special evanescent sense of self, we can posit that as existing in a completely different location to where our physical body is located within the physical world. Uh, again, there's nothing uh, real about that. I don't think there's anything we are really in a different location, and even though, as I say, I've had that experience myself, and the uh, the sense of being in this place is very convincing. Uh, I, I don't really buy the idea that you are actually in a different place. I think it's, uh, it's something else going on there. But the but the fact that it is possible to imagine that in such a convincing way is uh, a kind of support for our natural dualism. Uh, there is something quite odd about that out-of-body experience, though. And here I'm reminded of a video I saw of Jonathan Miller uh, some time ago, actually. I can't even remember the show. It was a, a, a black-and-white documentary or interview that he gave on... And it was on YouTube. I was looking at it a few months ago. And he was talking... He wasn't talking about out-of-body experience at all things. But he was talking about viewpoint, in a sense. Uh, and what he pointed out is that you know, when we seem to leave our bodies and go to a different place, we don't become disembodied in, a, in, a, in, a, in an imaginative sense. We kind of take our eyes with us. Uh, and certainly my experience of the out-of-body experience and the ones that I've read about, that's very common. You experience yourself as located in a different place to where your material body is but you seem to have eyes wherever you are because you are looking from that position. So you're looking down on yourself, for example, or you're in a remote location looking out of the eyes that would be there if you were located in that place. Uh, so it's not simply that this sort of strange disembodied spirit imaginatively leaves the body. It's that the, um, the sort of sensate body is imagined to be in a different place with the key sense that is taking with it, with it is the visual sense. I think it's very interesting that it never takes the haptic sense. You never feel yourself to be in a different location and uh, with your hands working. You know, otherwise you would be able to move things and so on. So there's nothing, there's nothing active about being in that except to the extent that vision is active. Uh, but that out-of-body experience is suggests a kind of imaginary body as well as a real body, an imaginary body somewhere else which is uh, predominantly um, informed by uh, visual access to the world, perhaps even defined by a viewpoint of visual access. <laughs>